Hey guys, what's up? So this is this 98 Cub Cadet 3205 I bought about a year or so ago with the hopes of turning it into a usable machine. This is a well-worn, cheap Craigslist special. And I went through this over the summer tinkering with it off and on to fix a few things that it had going on with it that I knew about. One of those was the transaxle had a leak in it. The axle seals uh, were leaking. It's a pretty common thing on these. So I went through and did that. I had to do it twice actually. I did it wrong the first time, but now we seem to be nice and dry and all that. And so that's good. Also went in and put a few lines on it and put a battery on it. Uh, I had to do an idler on the deck under here. One of those is new. I don't know which one. Maybe on the far side over there, but one of those is noises I replace that. And I put valve covers and gaskets on it, changed the oil, and rebuilt the carburetor, just cleaned it basically. That's what I did. That's all I really needed. And um, what else? Just kind of cleaned it up a little bit. And that was about it that I knew about. And then when I started trying to operate this thing, it had a few other things going on. These ignition switch, which I've bought. I'm going to tack on at the end of this video, I'm going to tack on a, uh, another video where I've worked on the lights on this thing earlier when it was all apart to get it uh, so the lights would work on it. And uh, what else? I think that was mostly it, but one thing I had to address with this was this this PTO. This, <laughs> if you remember, <laughs> yeah, if you remember back uh, a few videos back on this thing, I was laughing because I said, can you believe somebody, some redneck would tie that PTO assembly in the on position and just not even replace the actuator? Well, the previous owner or whoever did that had the last laugh on me because when I went to get into this to replace this actuator, there are no more of them because this is some kind of couple year only two three four whatever how many years this was used i guess i don't know i have no idea but they use this vacuum pto assembly and what it is is it is a bellows with a rubber around it made made onto it and it's got a vacuum supply to it, it has an electric switch and so you pull a lever up here on the dashboard And when you pull that, it, it, this thing retracts and it pulls the PTO pulley assembly, which is in there. See those two belts? Those are the PTO belts that runs off the crankshaft. So it, that's what runs the uh, PT, what they call the PTO, but it's basically the uh, it's the drive shaft for the mower deck. So that's how that thing works. And the one that was on this was busted all the heck it was unusable so they had rigged it so i was you know critical of that i thought well I'll just go buy one well there are no more because this is an an outdated part and there was a superseded replacement number that superseded this one that replaced it but you can't get that one either so you may wonder well how in the world did you get one i paid for it that's how i got one i mean i paid probably twice what this thing's worth this thing here like a hundred bucks plus to get a good one and it works, it works fine, does what it's supposed to do. How long it will work, I don't know, because probably the reason they got away from that is because this thing is facing inward to the engine, so it's got all this heat trapped in here from the exhaust and everything. So it will probably, despite my best efforts to keep it you know, conditioned, it will probably fail at some point. And when it does, if this thing's still running by that point, I will probably work up some kind of a mechanical lever for this. I'm not paying another hundred dollars for one of these. I don't even know if I can find another one. This is a used one, as I said. So came from somewhere out west. They pulled it off a parts tractor. But anyway, uh, the thing I have to address today I want to get knocked out is this PTO assembly is having some problems. I'd forgotten about it. I took all this off to when I was replacing this thing here. Um, I have forgotten that this the thing under here is all you can't tell now because it's against the belts i think i have it adjusted kind of tight but the belts i think not only are the belts stretched under there but this 
this where this pulley mounts in there is all or Pete might say is woggly. It's a good term for it. It's woggly. So I have to get under here and I'm gonna pull this PTO assembly back off here. It's not hard to get off. Kind of spring over here to take off and then yeah, it's not tight. Uh, and then you got a couple bolts over here that hold it on. You just take those off and pull the thing out. So I'm going to do that now. This machine is very well used. I'll say that for it because it's got other issues. Just try not to spend a whole lot of money on it till I could determine that everything's going to work on it enough to be a good machine. But it's got the deck is. You know, one of the rollers back here is no longer turns. It's been drug on the grass so long it now it's frozen up. It's flat on the bottom, so <laughs> it's no longer a roller. I don't know what you would call that. I guess you call that a skid. So that's that's not that's not any good anymore. And then these scalping wheels are supposed to have bushings in here. You see, there's a, a blue point for them, but. Don't mind that movement, but this thing here is, there you go, see how that's moving around. So anyway, so I've ordered and got the parts in to replace this, all this stuff in this PTO. So hopefully I've got a couple belts and the nylon, little nylon bushings. So let's get this thing apart and see what it looks like and what we gotta do to fix it. Okay, so here's what's wrong with this thing. This is what you have to go in it. Two of those things. Let's take it apart. So as it turns out, one's here and one is missing. That one's there, actually in decent condition, and that one's totally gone. So that's going to work out pretty good because I was looking at this, and this other one here looks like it needs one replaced on that end also. It's not as critical, but we need to replace that. So I'm going to uh, clean up the bowl a little bit and leave it up and put it all back together. Well, yeah, it's back together. I don't know that I would call this necessarily tight, but it's better. I guess for American made, it's good enough. Probably doesn't have to be perfect anyway, so. All right, I'll change those belts and throw this pig back together. Yep. That's what I say we do. So do you see how easy it is to change the belts on one of these? Nothing to it. <laughs> yeah. We're talking about the Pandora box of lawn mowers here. Lawn tractors. <laughs> okay, so here's the deal. Here's what's going on. So these stupids at Cub Cadet MDD, when they put this thing together, they made it so that the end of this crankshaft up here is right against the muffler. You see that over there on the muffler? There's an, I don't want to get up. There's an indentation, that's the front, that's the side that goes to the engine right there. You see there's an indentation made into it right there? Right there, that thing. Well, that's to clear this and that end right there. And that's all it does is clear that. And there's no room to get the belts off with everything assembled. Can you believe that? I can believe it, because I can believe anything these days. Nothing surprises me. I've lost the capacity to be surprised anymore. So, to change the belts, you have to pull the muffler. You have to pull the grill. Excuse me, let's start from the beginning. You have to pull the grill off. It's over there now. You have to pull the muffler off, which thankfully doesn't have any clamps. It's got four bolts that hold it in. That's it. And then you weasel it out the front. And then you can get to this thing and makes it so you can change the belts and all that. It's a lot easier, but it's not the end of the world. But, but though, we can't just put it back together because I noticed the other day when I was running this, actually about a week ago, maybe a little bit more, that the front seal's leaking it's there. So it's right in behind here. There's a bunch of oil and it's dripping and all that. It was dripping when it was running. So there's no way that any good mechanic worth his salt is going to put this thing back together with a leaking front main seal just to have to take it all back apart again to put the seal in it later. 
So it's not worth it to do that. So I'm not going to do it. So once again, I have to set this thing to the side and get back on the internet and order a front main seal for it. And think, sit in there and think of anything else that may possibly have to be replaced on this thing. <laughs> That's what I'm telling you. When people, when people say that they get a cheap lawnmower, or a cheap car, or a cheap truck, I cringe about that because I think there's nothing cheap about that. <laughs> nothing cheap at all about that. It's never cheap. Cheap is never cheap. You saw good old Art, my buddy RP. He gets a free lawnmower, but then he spends two weeks trying to get the thing to run or work or something. That's just the way it goes, all of this stuff. So the parts aren't dreadfully expensive. It's not that. It's just a lot of labor. So, you know. But hey, this thing was by the equivalent working mowers a lot more than what we're spending here. So, anyway, I'm going to get this thing wrapped up and get those exhaust pipes sealed up and we will I think I'm going to go ahead and just put this up as a part one maybe and then uh, we'll get the part in and we'll we'll show getting this seal replaced on this Kawasaki engine here this V-twin Kawasaki and we'll hopefully put this together and maybe maybe Maybe. Maybe it'll work. Or maybe not. You never know about stuff like this. Maybe it'll work. If it feels like it, it might work. If it feels like it won't, it won't work. I don't want to, it's not going to. <laughs> All right, so I got to quit goofing around here. Let me get this picked up. I got to, we're going to have possibly our first freeze tonight. It is October, what's the date? 16th? Something like that. 17th? Somewhere in there. So we're going to get our first possible freeze tonight. So all my plants that are in my little garden over there, most of them are perennials. It won't hurt them. But uh, some of them are annuals, so they're just, this is the end of the road for them. But I have one of my plants on the porch I'm going to bring in and see if I can keep it alive all winter. A mandevilla plant. I wouldn't normally do that, but I paid $25 for that thing. And that's, that's a lot of money just to let something die. So... Anyway, I guess that's it. Uh, seemed like there was something else I was going to talk about, but I don't guess I am now. Okay, guys, well, there's a yellow jacket right there. Look at that. I think that's a yellow jacket. Nope. It's not yet. Yeah, it may be. I don't know what that is. You know, there's there's a lot of flies that mimic wasps and bees, but I, I don't know what that one is. Hmm. I think that's a fly, though. That looks, maybe I'll, maybe I'll harass it and see what it does, and if it stings me, I'll know it's a yellow jacket. Okay, well, stop talking, Tyler. All right, guys, uh, we are, right now, the uh, 273 is waiting for me to get back on there, I think I'm going to do that starting in the morning because I got parts in every day this week just about for it. I got all the gaskets in, got a water pump in. I'm still waiting on a timing chain and freeze plugs, and I think they're on the front porch out there. Okay, then. So as I communicated to you in the previous part of this video, I was going to have to tear into this mower, this Kawasaki. I think this is an F FD620 V or something like that. Anyway, it's a two-cylinder two V-twin Kawasaki engine. And uh, it has a leaking front seal on it. You can see the sludge. Seems like I've been dealing with a lot of sludge lately. A lot of sludge and oil residue here. And it looks like it's been going on for a while, judging by all the slop in here. And so I'm going to have to pull this, get this pulley off here. It'd be nice to just take the bolt out and just come right off. I doubt it. So I'll probably have to pull it off. But uh, do that and replace the seal. I have a new seal for it. Here's the part number. It's actually the old part number, but it is a genuine Kawasaki seal. And I've uh, been trying to, for the most part, use genuine Kawasaki items on this stuff. So I don't have to do it again. And then put it all back together and hope it all works. So I'm going to buzz this off of the impact. And nothing to see there. I'm just going to do that. And then we'll 
uh, forge ahead with this. So I'm out here at this, I guess you could call this my little tractor shed or whatever. This is, is one of these, it's a Harbor Freight. I think this is a 10 by 15, something like that. I don't know. You can look it up, but it's just one of those little prefab deals you put a cover on and it's been doing pretty good. I moved it from over in the yard where it's getting beat up by the wind over there. So I keep all my outdoor stuff in it and there's just no way to really keep this thing organized. You basically just have to try to find a spot for things. But be that as it may, the other thing that's going on with this shed is this has turned into ground zero with these wasps. You've already seen me fight those things several times and uh, it's ongoing. I killed two today. I came in yesterday or the day before. There's one over there dead. And uh, well, look at that. Look at that. The gall of that thing. Yeah, come over here. Come on. Come on. There you go. Yeah, fly right towards it. He might have gotten away, but my aim is good enough now that I can usually pick them out of the air with this stuff. Because I see, they just fly right towards you. They're stupid. But anyway, evidently, these things have decided in whatever insect way things, and they decide things. But they decided they're going to take over my shed for the winter. So I came in the other day and there was a whole cluster of them over there on that piece of framing going across there. And so I wiped all them out. And then every day since then I've come in here and there's been at least a couple, three in here. And they're in here for the winter. They're trying to hide out in here. They think the human is too stupid to come in here and find them. But that they're going to learn. They're going to learn a hard lesson. See, these wasps, I've, I've done a bit of studying about these wasps and the way it works with these things is the ones that do what they have to do to survive the winter, they hibernate. And those are the queens that are, I don't know what you would say, but they are pregnant, in other words. They're fertilized. And so they find some place to hang out where they can hibernate, like in here or in the wood pile out there, that's where I'll find the rest of them, or someplace else. And then whenever it warms up again, the rest of them all starve to death. But whenever it warms up again, the queens come out and take over again. But this time they're not taking over because I'm gonna dedicate, Lord wills me to stay here all winter, make it myself, something coming up the railroad tracks down there huh well anyway so if the Lord good Lord wills it for me to be here during the winter and I make it through the winter then I'm gonna be watching out for them and I'm not even gonna let them get a foothold in here I don't care how much wasp killer I have to buy or a brake cleaner or whatever I don't care what it takes it's gonna be total onslaught They're gonna, they're gonna wish they never came to my shed. So anyway, enough of that. Let me get busy, guys. Quit yakking. All right, that's off. Finally, you ever seen a crank pulley come off in three pieces? This one did, and it's not broken. That's the outside. Then it's got a, a little washer between it, and then the second sheave, and then another washer, and then the rear sheave. And it also had a forgot about this part. Had a uh, little spacer on the front of it. It did not want to come off either. I had to take the impact to the puller there. But anyway, that's off. It's history. So you can see, definitely needed the seal there. It's pretty rough and crusty and gunky in there. So we get that thing on. I think I'm just going to tap a little hole in it, put a screw in it, and maybe just pull it out that way. Just be done with it. So no muss, no fuss. Okay, seal's in. A little bit of... RTV, no one hardening, good quality sealant around the perimeter. Just make sure there's not any leaks. Try to go back together. Put these pulleys back on now.
Okay, somehow or another, I think I have this thing ready to go finally. Put everything back together, put everything back on. And uh, so we'll see. This thing is in rough shape. It's still, <laughs> still kind of in rough shape. But uh, I found that I had a, one of the front PTO belts had slipped off, I guess, when I was putting, a, putting them on and the, uh, I was messing around with the, the, uh, the guide bolts under it. I probably had knocked one off or did something to it. Anyway, I'll put that back on. So everything seems to be working. So <laughs> for now, let's see what happens. I even had to put a new ignition switch on this. Can you believe that? Lots of little stuff on this. Okay, on another afternoon, a day later, as it turned out, I took this mower on this maiden mowing job, and it's all good for the most part. It mows good, and it stayed running the entire time, stayed moving the entire time. No warning lights came on, or anything like that. I didn't see smoke or anything else, but. <clears throat> 
Uh, it's got a few things that, you know, it's like a car. When you buy a used car and you just take it for a short test drive, and then you, after you live with it for a little bit, you discover some other things that need to be addressed. And it's got a few. So it's not bad. Um, <clears throat> the ground speed is a little bit slow on it. I think that is something to do with these pedals. I mean, it, uh, it it moves pretty good clip, but I think it's supposed to go a little faster than that. And it, the transmission, the hydro seems good on it because it doesn't slow down when it gets hot or anything like that or act like it's struggling. It's just that uh, I think they're a little bit out of adjustment, but we'll check into that. And the second thing I noticed right away is this thing has hydraulic power steering, but there's no steering box. All it is is it's got a ram on it. It's probably pretty common design there and it has a significant dead spot right near the center I mean you get like the far ends of the travel you get movement just fine but when you're just you know cruising along here and trying to go in a straight line it kind of is this way and back this way and so until I got used to placing this deck in the guide wheels and all that where it needed to be i was surprised i didn't run something over and cause an accident because it's you know it's just something's something's not right there so definitely gonna have to look into that maybe it needs that i don't know if maybe the cylinder needs to be rebuilt or i don't think it's the cylinder i would say it's probably more likely there is a it's probably got a unit a hydraulic some sort of hydraulic unit that is responsible for the direction of travel probably something similar to a power steering pump in a car or a power steering box in a car may have like a shuttle valve or something that that type of thing i don't know i haven't looked into it but i would say that that's probably something to do with it and of course that thing is going to be buried under here where you have to take the whole body and everything off so whatever it is i'm not dealing with it this year and uh, the deck needs some more work on it. It's going to need a belt. I heard the belt slip a couple times. Not bad, but uh, it's the one that was on it. I decided I wasn't going to I wasn't going to put a belt on it until I determined that the the deck was any good, so, or the mower itself was any good actually. But the other thing is the rollers are worn out on it. I think I already showed that. This one's it's, it moves, but. I don't know about the center one. I think it does, and I think the front one does. But I know for a fact that this one, this one over here, it's dragging this one because it didn't turn it off. So, and the kingpin bushings that are in these things are, oops, I was looking around the camera, not through it. They are loose, so this they're kind of rattly and stuff like that. And not sure that that's supposed to be that loose like that. But I'm telling you, everything, I don't know how many hours this motor has on it, but everything that had a bushing in it of any type is worn out. So, but the deck runs good. I don't think, you know, it's just clattery when it's going over the ground. I don't think, it, you know, it seems to be the, the, uh, the spindles were, were nice and tight and quiet on it, so that's good. So anyway, it seems to be, you know, seems to be a pretty sound unit. We'll try to get as much use out of it as we can, you know. It'll, I'm sure it'll die at some point, but uh, the rear end seems to be doing just fine. No leaks, so that seal replacement job I did seemed to do the trick on it. And so I'll look into these other things. The only thing I don't like about it is that it will not mow in reverse. It's one of these safety things, I guess. But it cuts the deck off if you try to back up. So you have to cut the lever back off and back on again when you go forward. So the other thing to smell a little bit of gas. We're not leaking some fuel here or anything. Hang on. Hang on. One thing that's going to have to be, the the idle is way up too high on it because it's running too fast. When I turned it off, 
I got a little backfire out of it. <laughs> but this is the one that also, I did not do anything with the cooling system. I just made sure it had cooling in it, but it needs a thermostat. And I've got the thermostat and the hoses and all that to put on it. But we'll run it. I probably have to mow. I don't know. I'd say probably one, at least once more this year, maybe even twice. So we'll just run it as is until then. But one thing there's going on with that. But anyway, a few things to address with it. But it's you know for compared to the other one, man, this thing is like a Cadillac. I mean, it's like driving a. It got the yard done, even not going as fast probably as it could. It got the yard done a lot quicker than the other one did so but you know it's just another chapter in the book of resuscitated revived brought back from the dead it was too bad for the normal person type stuff and it goes in the book about this stuff that I, I've pretty much lived through it's just another chapter in it, another machine that was destined for the graveyard dead um, everybody else except maybe me thought it was dead and maybe some people think it ought to be dead but I'm too cheap to go buy something newer like this so this is it so <laughs> I appreciate you watching I know this has been a long drawn out affair with this thing I should have I bought it last year and I should have had it fixed last year this time but you know I just get busy doing other things we got a construction project started back up over there, but the house is going up. So anyway, I'm sure they're looking forward to it. They've been lo living in that garage for <laughs> two years. Would be too. All right, guys. So we may do a few things with this thing over the winter. I'm not sure. I may just park it and focus on other things. If it's like anything else, mower related, I will ignore it all winter and wait till the grass is already starting to grow. And then to try to make some of these repairs it's probably the way it'll go anyway all right enough yakking so i'll see you on another one I always appreciate you hanging out with me bye